Right now, after finishing third in both the Kingswood and the Wellingborough by-elections last week, our Reform, Reform UK now a serious threat to not just the Tories, but Labour as well. Joined now by Deputy Leader of Reform UK, Ben Habib, who of course stood in Wellingborough. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and congratulations on your 13% uh, result in Wellingborough. Now, of course, people say 13%, you didn't win, you didn't come second, you weren't a real challenger, you only came third, but taking the Lib Dems and also the highest result for Reform UK in an actual election after polls that have shown yeah. you steadily growing. Is this the start of something or do you think, is this the peak? Have you been and gone? No, this is definitely the start of something. And I, there are a number of reasons I say that. The first is that in Tamworth and Mid Bedfordshire, where we also stood, we got 5% and just under 5% of the vote respectively. And four months later, I stood in Wellingborough and my colleague Rupert Lowe stood in uh, Kingswood and we got 13 and 10%. But the, the underlying story is more dramatic than that because Rupert and I didn't really kick off our campaigns until after it was too late to really garner any of the postal vote. And as you might know and viewers might know, uh, postal votes have become increasingly important, in, particularly in by-election uh, campaigns. And before we'd even started, about 10,000 votes had been casted, had been cast by postal votes. Yeah. And I got very few votes in the postal votes, as did Rupert, because our campaign was on the ground after the postal votes had more or less yeah. been done. Uh and so even though I got 13%, actually, if you look at the take on the day, you know, well, how many people voted on the day itself, my, my vote was closer to 20% and Rupert's would have been closer to 15, if not slightly higher. So the, 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 it's been quite a dramatic rise mm. in popularity of Reform UK. And I was literally on, on a call with Richard Tice just before I came on to you. And I think what, what I was telling him as a debrief is that we're pushing against an open door. People really want change. They're sick of the two-party system. They recognise Labour to be just as bad as the Tories and they want something different. And Reform UK has all the small C conservative policies, which, you know, that silent majority, and I know you were talking about it to Charlie before, that silent majority that voted for Brexit. They're all, they're all our, they're, they're, they're our lot, they're our people. And they're looking for something like us. And as we become known, I think you're going to see our vote share rise. And, and and frankly, I hope I'm not creating myself a hostage for fortune, but <laughs> I think rise dramatically. Well, the, the, when we see that happens with the Lib Dems, with, with Greens, it, with, when the smaller parties are talked about more because of results like this, then you get more attention and then people uh, consider you uh, someone that they, they could actually vote for. Often, you know, in a poll, if you're not mentioned, you might not, might not get as many mentions. Here's the thing, though. When we co it's one thing as a by-election, isn't it? In one of these seats, I mean, goodness me, it's not even going to exist after boundary changes at the next election. People might want to have a little bit of a protest vote, protest vote. When it comes to election day, for general election, you've basically got only two people, two men, who've got the option of being prime minister. With all due respect to Richard Tice, he, leader of the UK, he ain't, I mean, we don't, we have a first past the post system. He ain't going to be the next prime minister. People have got a choice between Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer. And at that point, a lot of people will say, I would vote for Reform UK. I like the cut of your jib. I like your policies, you know, on a lot of these issues. You're more conservative than the Conservatives are. You feel like to be a wishy-washy Labour Party. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Well, yeah, the Liberal Democrats. But yeah. I, I don't want to risk... They might say, I don't want to risk a Labour government. What would you say to those people? Well, I, I'd say a number of things. Um, first of all, whether or not you vote Tory or Labour, you're going to get socialist policies. You know, look at 14 years of Conservative Party governance. We've got national debt at a post-World War II high, taxation at a post-World War II high, GDP shrinking, GDP per capita shrinking even faster, rampant immigration. These are all symptoms of a protracted period of Labour governance. It's not, it's not what you would expect of the Conservatives. They delivered this country to the precipice of economic collapse. And... So what I would say to people is don't think that by voting Tory, first of all, you're going to get a, a Conservative government. And the second thing is that the only way to get change is to vote for it. If you keep voting for the Conservative Party or the Labour Party, you're going to reinforce their belief that the agenda that they have for the United Kingdom is the right agenda. And we can all see from the numbers 
um, that it's the wrong agenda. The United Kingdom is in deep, deep trouble at the moment. So if you want change, you want those small C conservative values, you want to ditch net zero, cut back immigration, reduce tax, deregulate the economy, you know, promote and celebrate the private sector, put aspiration back into people's uh, spirit, um, get rid of wealth redistribution and replace it with wealth creation. You've got to vote for that. And that the only party, frankly, offering it is Reform UK. Okay. And we may not, we will not form the next government. But there's a really good chance, Julia, of getting a, 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 a good number of seats, even in the first past the post system, which is why I started by saying, you know, my true vote share on the day was more like 20%, not 13. It was only the postal votes that put yeah, us you, on our you back said foot. Already. Now, um, Nigel Farage has been saying that, you know, actually the Tories would rather have him as leader than they would Rishi Sunak. He's more in line with the Tory grassroots members. We certainly saw at the last Tory conference and any event that Nigel Farage turns out, uh, he, of course, he's your honorary president of Reform UK. Still, yeah. that, that, you know, that he's very popular with the grassroots. We're told again and again by him, by Richard Tice, your, your party leader, that there won't be any sort of deal can people really trust that? Because a lot of people think that actually yeah. on the day, well, you know, the week, week beforehand, that there will be a deal. There, the, if there is a deal, I first of all, I will resign from Reform UK instantly. I will not be part of any deal with the Conservative Party because that would be doing the opposite of what I've just said, which is, you know, voting for change. What we would be doing if we did a deal would be to embed the policies that have brought the country to the precipice. And I could not be part of any of that. And when I joined Re Reform UK, I got a solemn promise from Richard. And by the way, he was completely onside anyway. I got a solemn promise from Richard that there would be no deals and we would stand in every single seat in Great Britain. We shall see what happens. It's going to be fascinating <laughs> to watch. I'm certainly very much of the view that I, I want, I, I've been a floating voter all my life. I just think when people say, well, I always give my vote to this party, I always give my vote to that party, then you do actually end up getting ignored because they, your vote is taken for granted. And people, my main thing is people need to go and vote. Whoever they vote for, they need to go out and actually cast their vote uh, so that they, they, they actually get their say. Can I ask you just one final question, though, Ben Habib? Um, yeah. Labour, we understand uh, Sue, uh, uh, what's her name? Oh, what's her name? Sue Gray, you know, formerly, you know, of the uh, Partygate Inquiry. She is uh, yeah. now going to be Chief of Staff to Keir Starmer. She says they're looking at having citizens' assemblies um, uh, when they come into power to decide big issues. Just very briefly, your thoughts on that? Well, every time you get a Labour government, they want to devolve authority away from Westminster. And this is just another one of those, you know, sounds like a citizens' assembly. What it's going to be is forums in which they can promote their own ideology and exclude, actually, what the, what the majority want. I wouldn't trust anything coming out of Labour. OK, Ben Habib, thank you very much indeed. He's Deputy Leader of Reform UK.